today I am going to start a new lecture series on plant tissue culture. Now plant tissue culture is a technique that has emerged as one of the most important and productive techniques of biotechnology. It has varied applications in different areas and we will discuss these applications in detail in the lecture series. So it has been used in numerous areas of science, even it has a significant commercial contribution in the field of secondary metabolite production, in the field of genetic modifications of the plant, specifically commercially important plants and in, in the field of developing disease resistant plants and not only these it, it is also used in the conservation of plants also. So in this lecture series I will start with the definition of plant tissue culture and its classification followed by a historical an overview of historical development of this technique wherein I will be focusing on some of the ground breaking discoveries in the field of plant tissue culture. I will give you a brief overview of various basic requirements that, that are required to perform a plant tissue culture experiment or required to set up a plant tissue culture laboratory. We will discuss these requirements in detail as well. Then I will be discussing about different types of plant cultures depending upon their growth pattern either the growth is organized or unorganized like if we are talking about unorganized growth uh, tissue cultures then we have callus and suspension cultures when we talk about the organized uh, plant tissue cultures then we have root tip, shoot tip, anther, pollen, embryo and so on and so forth. So we will discuss in detail different types of plant tissue cultures and in the end I will be focusing upon the application part of this important technique. So to start with the definition of plant tissue culture, this technique is also referred as an in vitro exanic or sterile culture technique which is an important biotechnological tool in both basic and applied studies as well as in the commercial application. So as I told you that plant tissue culture has emerged as one of the most important biotechnological tool which has numerous applications in different facets of different areas of uh, science along with its commercial application. So this was a very crude definition I will say. Then it is also defined as a science of growing plants, tissues or organs isolated from the mother plant on an artificial media. Again this definition is not complete because we know that in order to grow the plant cells in artificial media we have to maintain certain conditions. So this definition does not talk about the, those conditions. So these are some of the uh, preliminary definitions that were given for plant tissue culture. Then Street in 1977 he recommended a more stricted, restricted use of this term because in the previous two definitions uh, we have discussed that there is no specific mention of the special conditions that are required to grow the plant cells under uh, fr uh, in on an artificial media. So therefore Street gave a more restricted use of this term and according to him plant tissue culture is generally used for the aseptic culture of cells, tissues, organs and their components under physical and chemical conditions in vitro. So this definition was uh, a bit complete in its sense because here Street talks about the physical as well as the chemical conditions, uh, the desired physical and chemical conditions that are required to grow the cells under in vitro conditions properly. Then came one of the most comprehensive definition of plant tissue culture and it states that plant cell, tissue and organ culture is a set of techniques designed for the growth 
and multiplication of the cells and tissues using nutrient solutions in an aseptic and controlled environment. This technology explore conditions that promote cell division and genetic reprogramming in in vitro conditions. So that is why I said that this definition is a sort of most comprehensive definition because you will see that it covers almost every aspect of the plant tissue culture. So this definition does not say it is a single technique but it is a group of different techniques which are required for the proper growth as well as multiplication of the cells where using an artificial nutrient media or solution under aseptic as well as the controlled environment. Now all these points were missing in the previous definitions and not only uh, this definition explains the conditions but also highlights some of the important applications of the plant tissue cultures like the, the division of the cells pr to promote the division of uh, the cells to go for genetic reprogramming or manipulations in the plant genome all under the in vitro conditions. Now if we look into these uh, definitions one thing comes out common that all these definitions highlight the growth of the cells though this growth or the cell division is under artificial conditions or uh, the maintained conditions but they are more or less they are concerned with the growth of the isolated plant cells. Therefore it has been found that growth can be categorized into organized growth and unorganized growth. Now I will take, uh, take you back to one of my previous lectures where we discussed the organized plant drugs and unorganized plant drugs. So in that definition I told you that organized drugs are those which have specific anatomical features or structures in their, uh, uh, in their composition. Whereas unorganized drugs do not have any kind of cellular or tissue structures in them. So same happens here also in organized growths. These are th this is that type of growth where there is a creation or maintenance of defined structures. So we are talking about the growth of the plant cells. So when these cells grow into specified structures, we call it as an organized growth. And this occurs when plant organs mainly the growing points of the shoots or the roots because we know that the these areas they contain the cells which are having high ability to divide. So uh, growing points of shoots and roots, leaf initials, young flower buds, small fruits or piece of tissues that are transferred onto the culture and continue to grow with their structure, basic structure preserved. And this whole process of uh, developing different organs from the cells is known as organogenesis or morphogenesis. So whenever we grow a cell into uh, a structure which is having a well defined structure we call it as organized growth. On the contrary unorganized growth is something where you do not have differentiation of the cell into specific structure. If we look into the nature then this type of unorganized growth is very rare. In case of plants majority of the growth is organized growth and this unorganized growth leads to the formation of cell aggregates which typically lack any recognizable structure and they contain only a limited number of the many kind of specialized cells or differentiated cells in their group or in their structure. So this is the basic difference between organized and the unorganized growth. Now this type of uh, uh, formation of differentiated cell types, now this differentiation can be controlled to a limiting, limited extent in a culture because you, we cannot change the basic nature of a cell. So if it is uh, tend to differentiate into a specific structure, we can only delay that differentiation, we can only control that differentiation to a limited extent. By contrast, unorganized tissues can be increased in volume by subculturing. We can uh, control their differentiation by subculturing those tissues. Suppose you have grown 
uh, a group of cell as a callus which is we know that it is a mass of undifferentiated cells we can stop its differentiation by its subculturing so that is why we can always limited uh, we can limit the growth or differentiation of the cells to a limited extent by subculturing now we move on to the types of plant tissue culture if we want to categorize plant tissue culture on the basis of growing pattern or the growth pattern that is obtained we can have unorganized plant tissue culture and organized plant tissue culture unorganized plant tissue culture means callus cultures or suspension cultures where we do not get any differentiated form of cells whereas in case of organized plant tissue cultures we we may get root shoot embryo or anther or pollen cultures and so on so forth depending upon the basis of growing as well as the maintenance of the culture we can categorize plant tissue culture broadly into callus and suspension cultures so we know that callus is again undifferentiated mass uh, of cells which grows on a solid media whereas suspension cultures are those which are maintained by using a liquid media we can grow any we can perform any kind of plant tissue culture whether root culture whether shoot culture embryo culture or broadly if i say we can perform any kind of organized plant tissue culture by using we can maintain those cultures by either callus culturing or by suspension culturing we can also categorize plant tissue culture on the basis of the ex plant material that is used now the ex plant is nothing but the tissue or the plant material that is used for developing the culture and on the those basis we have root tip culture where we use the root tip of the plant shoot tip culture embryo culture anther culture pollen culture protoplast culture and so on so forth so whatever plant part you are using that becomes the type of plant tissue culture and all these cultures can be maintained either by using callus culturing or by suspension culturing now we move on to the historical development of this important biotechnological tool it all started somewhat between the mid 18th century when henry louis dumail monique during his studies on wound healing of the plants observed callus formation on those plants so he was very much intrigued by this group of cells that uh, uh, that developed when he was studying the wound healing properties of the plant but the major impetus occur when schleiden and schwann gave their famous cell theory now schleiden was working on the plant cells and according to him all the plants are made up of cells whereas schwann gave uh, the concept that all the animal cells or tissues are made up of cells so together they gave the cell theory which state that cell is the basic unit of life so this gave the major impetus towards the development of plant tissue culture because now the scientists believe that cells are the basic unit of life and every uh, organism whether it is a plant or animal they develop through those cells now following this cell theory virchow in 1858 he stated that all cells come come from the existing cells now this was another important breakthrough because this this was considered as an extension of cell theory wherein the scientist came to know that whatever cells or tissues the plants or animals are made up of these cells come from the existing cells only so there was certain mechanism by which these cells divide and grow which lead to the formation of other cells but again there was certain delay in the development of this subject because they were not having sufficient media or the appropriate media by which they can grow the cells out of the living systems or under in vitro conditions until 1865 when wilhelm knopp developed a nutrient solution 
which is now popularly, uh, popularly known as NOPS solution, which was nothing but a mixture of potassium nitrate, calcium nitrate, magnesium sulfate and potassium dihydrogen phosphate. So, he developed a liquid media and what was the driving force behind this developing this liquid media was he found that the plants which grow in soil, he believed that they, they extract out nutrient from the soils in the liquid form. So, he believed that if we provide those nutrients in the liquid form to the plants, they can even grow without soil and that is why William Knopp is always considered as co-founder of hydroponics, which we call it call as water culturing of the plants or the growth of the plants without soil. Now, this was one of the major breakthroughs in the development of plant tissue cultures because now scientists have a nutrient media or a solution in which they can grow their cells. Again in 1878, Hermann who is a who was a German botanist, he worked on different plants and developed calluses from those plants. And he, while working on Brassica rapa, he gave a very important concept of polarity, polarity of the growth of the plants. According to his experiments, according to his findings, he stated that upper part of the stem segment always produce buds, whereas the lower end gives the roots, which are independent of the size until a very thin segment was reached. So, again, this was another important breakthrough in uh, plant tissue culture development because now scientists they came to know they have specific regions which lead to the growth of the shoot system and specific regions will, which lead to the growth of the root system. Though these findings again were very preliminary because later on they, they found that the growth hormones play a critical role in shoot and root development. The beginning of the 20th century or I will say the 20th century saw the major development in the plant tissue culture. It all began in 1901 when Morgan gave the term of totipotency, wherein he explained that how cells divide and grow. But it was in 1902 when Gottlieb Heberland, who is also known as father of plant tissue culture, performed certain groundbreaking experiments and published his results. He isolated single cells from different plants, different parts of the plants and he tried to grow those cells in simple nutrient solution of NOP, William Knopp solution. He found that the cells were able to grow, but they were not able to divide. So, he gave his hypothesis that you can grow the cells in nutrient media outside the living system. In 1902, he presented his findings in a form of paper and he stated that though we can grow the plant cells outside the living system, but the major challenge will be the induction of cell division in those plants. So, that is why since he was able to grow the cells in uh, external media outside the living system, he was considered as father of plant tissue culture. In 1904, Hanning developed another plant tissue culture technique, which is known by the name embryo culture and he worked on embryos of various crucifer plants and he was successful in developing the cultures from those embryos. Following Henning, Brown in 1906 again developed successful cultures from embryo of barley. After that, there was a, there was a slowdown in the pace of development of plant tissue culture until 1925 when Lieback comes up with a groundbreaking discovery. He developed or he was able to, he was successful in growing the hybrid culture developed by the cross of Linum perini and Linum austriacum 
and why this was important because the culture of uh, because the embryos of the of this hybrid uh, embryo was not able to grow under normal conditions and he was successful in growing those kind of embryos and this intrigued various plant breeders various crop breeders towards that this discovery and this again revived the interest of scientific community into plant tissue culture in 1922 cotte who was a student of heberland along with robins they tried to develop a culture from root tip because heberland stated that it's easy to grow the cells in in uh, in vitro conditions so the first requirement for developing a plant tissue culture was the cells which were able to divide or able to grow so they uh, cotte and robins tried to develop a root tip culture of a particular plant but their study or their experiment was not very much successful until 1934 philip white who for the first time successfully developed root tip culture of a tomato root 15 years later uh, from this root tip culture development limaset and cornet also developed another technique of shoot tip culture in 1949 Now this development of shoot tip culture was also important because both these scientists were able to develop develop virus free plant through shoot tip culture so this give birth to another uh, area of application of plant tissue culture wherein we can develop disease free plants now philip white in his experiment initially he used a media with yeast sugar and inorganic salts and he was very much successful in subculturing in maintaining the culture of root tip by subculturing until his death in 1968 in india later the one of the component of his media yeast was replaced by three b vitamins namely pyridoxin thiamine nicotinic acid and this type of uh, modification in the culture was very much accepted by the scientific community and this was considered as the first synthetic growth or the nutrient media for plant tissue culture and it was popularly uh, popularly known as white media which is still being used in plant tissue culture studies in 1939 roger j gothret he was successful in obtaining continuously growing culture from the carrot root cambium and therefore his experiment or his uh, findings were considered as the first true tissue culture studies he used oxen and vitamin b's in his media during the same year nobecot uh, on his experiments with carrot root tissue and white on his experiment with the tumor tissues of nicotiana glauca and nicotiana langsdorfi hybrid both these scientists were able to develop successful callus cultures of these plants so they optimized the method of developing callus cultures in their studies and they optimized the methods to such an extent that their developed methods are still being widely used by the scientific community to develop callus of selected plants now since uh, white nobecot they were all successful in developing the cultures now another race started and this race was to identify the material which can be included in the growth media or the nutrient media that are to be used in plant tissue culture and during this race van overbeek and his group in 1940 for the first time showed that even the coconut milk which is now correctly named as coconut water has stimulatory effect on the development of young embryos of natura so even coconut water was then after that was used in plant tissue culture studies now till 1940s only the meristematic tissues were used for plant tissue culture experiments it was folke skoog in 1948 who for the first time showed culturing of non meristematic cells which he isolated from the pith of a plant so 
so he for the first time showed that even non meristematic cells can also be cultured can also be grow either into shoot or into the root so he made certain modifications in the media he added adenine and high levels of phosphate phosphate in his media in order to uh, successfully culture the non meristematic cell but he put a condition that the non meristematic cells can be cultured only if vascular tissues are present along with them 1940s was an era which showed or which witnessed maximum development in the cultural techniques for the floral and the seed parts of the plant when larue for the first time showed growth of the ovary cultures and even he was able to uh, induce rooting in the pedicels of several species in 1949 larue again for the first time was successful in exhibiting continuous growing tissue cultures from an endosperm from a immature maize grain but it was in 1965 when jori and bhojwani in india were successful uh, in developing an entire plant by plantlet regeneration through organogenesis from the endosperm of exocarpus cupriciformis so this was another ground breaking discovery wherein endosperm or other floral parts were used for developing the cultures of the plant then 1950s and 60s was an era for which witnessed the development in techniques in the discovery of different techniques that were involved in the plant tissue culture and it started with muir in 1953 and 54 wherein he was able to isolate single cells from the callus so what he did was he took he developed the callus cultures and he took the callus placed them into shakers and he agitate those shaker uh, calluses in the liquid media by which he was able to disintegrate those calluses into single cells then he an gave another important concept of nurse tissue so what he did was he wetted a piece of filter paper with nutrient media and place that wetted filter paper on pre established calluses now he place the single cells which he separated from the callus onto the filter paper and he was successful in induction of the division or the growth of these isolated single cells on the filter paper which were established on the pre established calluses so he gave a concept of nurse tissue development or the nurse development or nurse culturing in plant tissue culture in 54 1954 jablonski and skoog they again tested several plant extracts which can induce cell division in the culture because haberland stated that induction of cell division would be the most challenging factor in plant tissue cultures so in order to overcome that challenge they studied various plant extracts and found that yeast extract was most suitable to induce cell division during the cell culturing so friends we will continue with the historical developments of plant tissue culture in the subsequent lecture thank you